Hello to all friends and fans of the pulp, paper and buyer products industries. Welcome to our exciting Android Spectrum podcast. Today, we will talk about the importance of generating a proactive culture when it comes to health and safety at industrial projects. I am Mark Rushton, and I will be your host. I think we agree when we say that the very best way to avoid health and safety issues at industrial plants is to make sure they don't happen in the first place. In other words, there needs to be a proactive safety culture embedded across all areas of industrial platforms. So, we would like to welcome Giuseppe Damelli, Health and Safety Manager for Pulp and Paper Capital Projects at Andritz, and Gustavo Donoso, HSE Specialist, also from Andritz. We are delighted to have you with us today, gentlemen. Hi, Mark. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to um, be part of this interesting podcast. Hello, Mark. Thank you for inviting me to this podcast. I'm Gustavo Donoso, HSE Specialist, currently in the position of HSE Coordinator for a pulp mill project in Latin America. So, Giuseppe, let's start with you. So, uh, I've been around a few projects myself in the pulp and paper industry, and I'm sure that many of those tuning into our podcast have as well. They look to be very dangerous places to operate. So how do you even begin to start to put together a health and safety plan for a major project? Can you give us an idea of what exactly is involved? Uh, for sure, as you said, the environments where we are operating are very challenging ones. Uh, on, on the other hand, as well as many other working places. Um, and the, the, the keys to properly handle these challenges are a good planning and a committed team capable to implement the plan. In, uh, in Andres Pulp and Paper, we have a consistent and consolidated health and safety concept for our project, uh, which we are continually further developing projects by project, integrating new successful practice and learnings from previous experiences. This um, health and safety concept is the basis for each project health and safety plan. Nevertheless, for each new project, starting from the very beginning of the sale phase, we are tailor-making our health and safety plan, integrating more stringent customers' requirements, as well as local legal stipulation, and evaluating in deep the scope of the work according to the local condition and in close cooperation with our technical departments from the different hundreds organizations involved in the project. So this is how we can really handle the, the health and safety uh, performance on site in a proper way with, uh, with this close analysis from the very beginning of the, of the project, defining the suitable health and safety concept uh, specific for the contract. Thank you very much for that, Giuseppe. Um, staying with you, can you tell us more about the continual improvement of the Andres HSC management system? integrating best practices developed internally or observed and replicated? Yes. So, Mark, as you know, the health and safety discipline are continually developing and we in hundreds are trying to closely monitor and directly contributing to all improvement initiatives promoted by health and safety institutions as well as customer and all other business partners. Usually, we implement new approaches on a pilot project, and after verifying their effectiveness, we integrate them in the standard health and safety concept. And then we export them to all other projects through this common health and safety plan concept management system. Thank you very much for that, Giuseppe. Gustavo, turning to you, as an HSC expert on the ground, working on major projects in Latin America. Can you tell us about your day-to-day -day role? What does a day and a week in your life look like? First of all, my day usually starts searching for news and info related to any incidents on the road close to the mill for letting the group go into the site in a safe manner. Later on, at the site, there are meetings with customers related to general items, a goal, or working areas meeting with personnel and safety department from customer, and also safety walks in order to identify possible needs from our colleagues and our customer. All these combined with administrative tasks during the day. Thank you for that, Gustavo. There seems to be a lot of meetings uh, with staff at site. 
what are the topics you're discussing and need to consider at the site? Can you give us some examples of the conversations you're having? Of course. During the morning, in the general meeting with customers, we look at different safety items such as accident rates, high potential incidents, risk precursors from different areas, and achievement rates from contractor and maintenance staff. And the other meetings are held with the specific personnel from each area with support from a technical staff in order to plan the daily activities to be performed during the day. Thank you very much for that, Gustavo. Um, and back to you, Giuseppe. In general, are members of the project teams, both at Andritz and customers, receptive to HSC requirements set by you and your teams? How do you communicate with them? So in general, there is a large acceptance of the health and safety requirement, especially when we are dealing with structured and international partners. When talking about health and safety on site, we are usually referring to one unique team. Mm, where we have customer hundreds and all other parties working closely together, animated by a common target of finalizing the project with zero accident. In the last decade, more and more importance has been given to the psychological fa factors driving the individuals to fulfill the task for safe behaviors only. In this direction, we are focusing our efforts, developing new and innovative communication approach based on advanced leadership and behavioral-based safety principles, developing and consolidating the natural values present in each individual, facilitating an in the interdependent way of work where we are taking care of each other. Okay, thanks, Giuseppe. Gustavo, can you please also comment on the challenge of communicating all this important information when it comes to HSE in a mill project environment? Can you tell us, you know, what it's like on the ground there regarding communication? Once I arrived, there was a big barrier related to language, but with support with file translator and good cooperation with the team, the communication has been fluent through WhatsApp groups, emails, and face-to-face -face meetings. On the other hand, communication with customer has been good because we have direct communication with their HSC staff. So thank you, Gustavo. Uh, and back to Giuseppe. Can you tell us uh, how you go about applying the same HSE standards across the board at Andritz? And how do you develop people? Do you have mentors in place? So as you know, the Andritz Pulp and Paper organization is quite big and spread globally. In the last year, we have increased the internal cooperation and we achieved the incredible result regarding the harmonized working approach, intensifying and improving the internal communication and integrating under a common ISO certified health and safety management system, almost all legal entities part of our organization. We have common and systematic training and mentoring programs for all our employees and external partners, working in our location as well on our construction site. Through this program, we are guiding and assisting all key personnel, understanding and satisfying our health and safety requirements and expectations until they are fully familiar with them and completely independent in their in the work. So this process is realized through competent, qualifying, and experienced internal staff globally available. So we have mentors, we have good mentors, and they are operating all, our, all around our construction site. Thanks, Giuseppe. And uh, moving on to my next question, can you tell us about the HSE aspects included in development programs of all site staff through dedicated training modules? So, um, as probably I, I already mentioned in my previous answers, to, guar to guarantee an excellent health and safety performance, we need to ensure that all staff know exactly our health and safety requirements and expectations. And uh, this aspect we can fulfill through an initial project-specific health and safety induction carried out in close cooperation with our customers and following training sessions on specific topic according to the identified needs on site. In addition, we are monitoring continuously the safe execution of the activities on site, 
providing additional preventing information through site toolbox talk as, as well as correcting feedbacks during inspection assessment uh, done by our health and safety as well technical staff present on site. Thank you, Giuseppe. Uh, moving on to my next question. How do you make an HSE plan actually work? Tell us about the leadership, commitment, communication, and cooperation, and how they are the driving factors of success. So, as you well said, leadership, commitment, communication, and cooperation are for sure the cardinal factor ensuring the correct implementation of the health and safety plan and the satisfactory health and safety performance on site. We need to be able to work as one team together with our customers and other involved parties animated by common values and objectives and following a common approach based on full commitment, no compromises, transparent and extended communication. Communication is the leading factor of success in the project health and safety performance. And then we need to count on a leadership team being always the best example for all workforces. A precondition to ensure that the defined health and safety plan works it is its acceptance by all workforces. Acceptance is determined when the benefits associated to the requirements are clear and evident, as well as when they are adequate, adequately communicated implemented and followed by all natural and formal leaders present on site. Excellent, Giuseppe. Thank you so much for that. Um, and Gustavo, do you have any comments to make on this subject? Yes. Thanks to the well-prepared HSC plan, we were able to face in a good manner. The changing worldwide scenario caused by the pandemic with the internal and continuous support from Andre Chile in order to execute the work and reach the goal Considering all the change in the project, our personnel was working with the highest safety standard with zero accidents with major or fatal consequences or um, environmental issues, what is considered as success from safety point of view. Thank you, Gustavo. I have one final question for you. What is your overall target and goal when you're working on these large projects? Ultimately, what is your final aim at the conclusion? The overall target from my point of view is the implementation of a preventive culture, the increase of the reporting numbers of safety actions and conditions, always considering that our ultimate goal and our reasons to be here at the site is allow all our colleagues that are coming to site to return home safe and sound. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Clearly, there is an enormous amount of work that goes into the planning and execution of a bulletproof health and safety program when it comes to large capital projects. In fact, it could be said that health and safety has become a science over the last few decades and certainly gives any employees, contractors or visitors a lot of confidence to know that their safety is in good hands when entering the mill space or even beyond. It is also clear just how important good communication is in keeping people safe. If you would like to find out more about Andrit's HSE plans and strategies, please contact Giuseppe Damelli, our Health and Safety Manager for Pulp and Paper Capital Projects, directly. The contact details can be found in the show notes of this episode. Well, thank you very much, Gustavo and Giuseppe, for an excellent conversation. Very welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me in this session. Goodbye. Thank you for your invitation, Mark, and goodbye. Have a nice day. Thank you to everybody for listening and goodbye.